Brad Weber joins us. G'day, Brad. Welcome to the show, mate. Here we go. We're done. Brad, g'day, mate. Welcome to the show. Sorry. Yeah. My dummy. Didn't, you're there. You, you got didn't, me? Didn't push the right button, mate. How are you, mate? You've just finished training, yep? Yeah? I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Just finished up training for the, uh, for the day in a beautiful Hamilton day, so but, uh, it was all good. Okay, we were talking to Luke Jacobson last week. He said that Thursday was the big day you're playing on Saturday. So is this the big contact training day today since you're playing on Friday? Yep, yep. Day earlier, so today was the big one. Um, yeah, another big contact day. So, yeah, the boys are primed and ready for, for Friday now. How is your body? Because I know you were injured at the start of the year. Are you fit and firing? Yeah, no, um, no I wasn't, uh, wasn't injured at the start of the year. It's probably more the middle of the year. I had a bit of a neck issue um, that... Uh, get me out for a couple of weeks, but I got that sorted. Had a had a uh, injection in there to sort that out, and um, oh, well, I've been right as rain since then. So now nah, body feels real good, mate. I'm um, 31 now, but geez, I, I feel 25. Go on, you played the last four games, and look, can you can it would it be true to say that the game against the Waratahs was the best performance you've put on this year, the team? Uh, it's certainly right up there. Um, the win against the Crusaders earlier in the year down down there was pretty special as well. So, but I suppose since that point we've probably been pretty inconsistent. So, yeah, it's good to actually finally get um, a performance that's um, that was right for for our positioning on the table, I guess. And um, yeah, hopefully we're we're peaking at the right time of the season. Well, this is like a final that's a semi final, isn't it? This weekend, this is a hell of a match to look forward to on Friday. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure all the punters out there are looking forward to watching it. Should be like our games against the Crusaders. Ever since I've I've been here, the Chiefs have been um, absolute humdingers. So I'm sure uh, Friday night will be no different. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you've got form at this thing, haven't you? You've had semi-finals before them in the past, and I've always known those games have been played with re- reasonable amount of fire, shall I say? <laughs> yeah, uh, the the forwards in front of me seem to get stuck into each other. It's, uh, you know, I get front row seat to that sort of yeah. thing. So it's quite nice. To sit back and watch, but um, yeah, they'll get stuck into each other again tomorrow. Brad Weber, is, uh, Brad Weber is with us. Beating them in Christchurch already this season, so that's not a hoodoo. I mean, that, and that's a big thing, isn't it, for a lot of teams going down there to get that one out of the way, actually been able to physically do that. Yeah, I, it gives us a lot of belief uh, in amongst the group, knowing that we've we've done it before. We we can certainly do it again, um, and like. I guess for some reason we always seem to really get up for the Crusaders games. I mean, um, ever since I've been here, we've always um, beaten them or, or at least pushed them close. So, um, yeah, look, mate, the, the belief in, amongst the group heading down there, we know we can get the job done. So, um, yeah, we've got full, we're full of confidence, mate. Is that is that just because I mean this might sound dumb, but they're, because they're such a good team, because of the record that they've had, because that's what everyone aspires to be is to be that team. That's why you play so well against them. You always live to play the better team, don't you? I guess so. I mean, we've got a hell of a lot of respect for the Crusaders and what what they've done. And I guess like I've seen, you know, I've been watching them have all of their success the last five years, and certainly up here, like that's what I want. I want. I want the success that the Crusaders have had. That's what I'm. That's what I'm chasing as a Chiefs player, trying to um, trying to win it all. And they're the ones that have been the, uh, the lucky the lucky ones that have done it for what is it, four or five years in a row. So, yep, who's counting? Um, no better team. To, <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. It's been, almost been like clockwork. So hopefully we'll be the ones to to be the disruptors. Brad, what does Chiefs mana mean to you and to the players? Um, it's. <laughs> yes, I get asked this a lot actually. Like I, I sort of look back and um, reflect on what it was when I, or what I sort of learned it was when I first come in. Like guys like Tanner Latimer, Liam Messam, um, guys that uh, were really welcoming in amongst the group, but demanded a lot in terms of physicality, in terms of work rate, um, and then but were also like real good buggers off the field. Um, so I think. The way that we are in the community and um, is a big part of it, as well as um, the, the way we play on the field. So it's you know a lot of physicality, um, hard working, um, all the stuff that probably doesn't take a lot of talent. Uh, you just got to want to roll up your sleeves and do it. That's um, what Chiefs Manor is to me. It sounds like the word selfless. Is that right? Yeah. That's probably a good way of describing it. Maybe I'll just uh, use that next time. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I liked your answer. I thought your answer was great. Where are you at the moment in the All Blacks hierarchy in the picking and the pecking order? Where do you see yourself for fullback? For, sorry, for halfback. Oh, 
I'm not sure. I'm not the one. I don't select the team, so I, I've got no idea. But um, one thing I've I probably have learned in terms of All Black selection um, was to not worry about it too much. I think from sort of 2016 to 2018, I put way too much emphasis on worrying about what the selectors were thinking about me, about my form, how I was playing. And by this time of the season, it would negatively affect me because it would, you know, I'd know that the selection was coming up. Okay. And so from 2019 onwards, I just sort of said, like, th- th- they can, they'll just decide who the team is um, or what they, they think is best. I can't do anything about that. So I'll just focus on trying to win games for the Chiefs and get my team prepared and prepare myself as best as possible and play as well as I can. And that's us seems to take care of itself so that's the sort of mindset I'm in now like I, I just don't buy into any of the chatter like I'll leave that to you Martin and yeah, sure. uh, all the people out there you know you guys can talk about that sort yeah, of we stuff do. but yeah, um, we love doing it no I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> exactly <laughs> of course we do but you know it, what it does does that free your mind because uh, you know what, what, what I'm trying to um, what I'm trying to understand here is what you're saying is if you think about it too much then you're probably thinking about making errors or not making errors or something like that maybe you lose just a bit of natural yep. instinct or something is that right yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. So, like, you know, yeah, you make a mistake and the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Whereas when I sort of realised this, like, it was literally the weight of the world was off my shoulders. All of a sudden I could play free. You know, then I was seeing, trusting my instincts, seeing things that I was at the start of the season and I'm way more consistent in my performance. And honestly, mate, it's um, it's um it's been a breath of fresh air the way that I think about that for sort of the last three or four years it's just um made i suppose it's made rugby more enjoyable as well because you're not worried too much about that sort of stuff brad weber is with us on the platform i bet you could actually if you could turn around to your younger brad and say hey dude when you're 24 you just chill the hell out mate and it's going to happen for you <laughs> that's what life teaches us uh, though, doesn't 100%, it 100 like yeah that's probably yeah like it's probably like when i think like oh if i have a rugby regret is that one of my rugby regrets but I suppose it's kind of shaped me into how I am today, you know, so maybe I'll, I wouldn't change much, but, um, yeah, that, I certainly probably would give that advice to a younger man. I'd love to see you playing again for New Zealand Māori. I don't know whether that's possible, but the two tests against Ireland, I mean, you must be licking your lips at that going, heck, you know, I'd love to play those games as well. Oh, yeah, well, I, I guess that's a good thing about um, being eligible for the Māoris. I should hopefully get, get a crack at... Um, the Irish regardless and um, my partner is actually Irish she's from Dublin so Brilliant. Um, that gives me extra motivation <laughs> to play against them. <laughs> well, we had we had Clayton on the program uh, when it was announced, and I, I, I just love this team, mate. I got unashamedly, absolutely adore this team. I just think they're such an important part of our, our rugby, our history, our rugby heritage, and it just it seems such fun when the New Zealand Māori team get together. Oh, mate, yeah. You want to be in camp with us? It's bloody good I'd fun. I'd love to, mate. Um, and it's, yeah, it's and like you know, it's a lot of singing, but it's a lot about, uh, especially for a guy like me. Like I haven't always been in touch with a lot of my Maldi side. I've always known I've had it, but when you go into an environment like that where it's all about culture, and um, you also learn a lot about um, your Maldi culture as well. Like there's, there's uh, Luke Crawford who um, runs a lot of sessions around teaching um, Maldi. Uh, culture and stuff and yep. that was really eye-opening and really enjoyable for, for a guy like me and I know I'm not the only one in, in the team that enjoys that sort of stuff so yeah mate it's, uh, it's good fun Nothing really to apologise for though but it must teach you a lot about yourself I bet as well because you kind of I mean it's in there isn't it it's just trying to unlock it I suppose Yeah definitely and like that's what um, a guy like Luke does he helps you sort of figure out um, all that side of your family you know because he, he knows Jeez, mate, this guy knows everything about everyone um, in terms of iwi and, and hapu and stuff. So for that, it was really eye-opening. I've always wanted to learn more because, um, I mean, my granddad was sort of uh, pretty pretty big on it, but yep. um, we probably didn't learn as much growing up. So to have a guy like that to sort of help teach a guy like me that sort of stuff would certainly... Uh, help me learn more about myself, my family, and um, it certainly gives you something pretty cool to, to play for when you pull on the Maldives jersey. All the very best this weekend. I mean, we've got two crackerjack semi-finals. The quarterfinals were just massive, mate. And so, I mean, the, you know, when you're sitting there as a fan, you've got the, you know, your your mob playing their mob, and then you've got Auckland playing uh, the Brumbies on the next night. Two fantastic games of code to look forward to. Brilliant. Yep. Now I'm uh, 
uh, happy for all you guys out there that you, you get two absolute rippers, ripper of games and then um, obviously the week after the final will, will be a ripper too so it's good to see the, the Super Rugby Pacific end on, on a bloody good note. Yeah, all the very best for it and, um, and, and I've always wanted to say to you that I thought what you said about standing up and speaking your mind and speaking from the heart about the Israel Folau whole kerfuffle thing was brilliant mate, it was really good to read and it was really important that somebody like you actually said the truth, the honest truth of what you felt about it, it's brilliant. Oh, thanks, mate. Um, yeah, I, and funny you say that it is Pride Month at the moment, so um, I'm a big uh, ally for the Rainbow community, and so I'm hoping they all have a, a bloody good month and celebrate uh, accordingly. Good on you, mate. Let's look forward to Friday night. Thanks so much for spending some time with us, and I appreciate that, especially after training. Excellent. Nah, no worries, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, See mate. Me on. All right, Brad Weber with us on the platform. Good dude, eh? And and I and I and I mean that. Absolutely sincerely, when Israel Folau was spouting his hate speech and that, I think TJ Pedernado was the, was one of the first, or Brad might have been the first, um, that that came out and made statements on social media and that, unashamedly so, and if memory serves me correctly, I'm not Googling this, I'm just trying to sort of go back through the memory, but I think he said something like one of his, his aunties I was in a lesbian relationship and she was one of his most favourite people and special people and, and had just done you know so much for him and that and he just didn't want her to be besmirched. or uh, Just the way that he said it was just really heartfelt and it was just really real. And I just thought, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, I'm into every single athlete and every single sport, you know, <clears throat> politicising and things, but it's really important in situations like that that, that those that feel as strongly as he did come out and say what they said. And I just think it opens the door for a heck of a lot of, a lot of other people to feel confident enough to, in their own views as well. I mean, I, I, I don't know whether the players actually understand this, but for a lot of people who, 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 who are probably fans and things, just hearing somebody, you know, speak like that means that you can sit there and go, oh, I feel like that as well. So I'm perhaps not a weirdo because I kind of think the same thing as well. So very, very cool. Hope he makes the All Blacks again.